Alrighty, let's see what we have on the table today. Welcome back to the show, my friends. I know you've been tuning in for quite some time here and you recognize this Trail Finder 2 body. Now the Trail Finder 2 is a type of 110 scale electric truck kit or RTR, ready to run version that you can get from a company called RC Four Wheel Drive. Uh, this is the Toyota Hilux, the Mojave body uh, with some extra uh, hop ups or you know, just kind of add-ons I bought on eBay. These are rubber flares that I installed as well as the snorkel and this back roll bar here is actually sold by RC four wheel drive uh, but because in the last video that I did with this truck it was a music video <clears throat> I did a little bit of jumping and it was very very cold out uh, and I actually on the rocks over torqued uh, my front axle and the alloy housing actually exploded on this side <laughs> very unusual it was quite cold but even in the cold runs i've done before i've never seen that happen so we had a flaw or something get in there maybe a piece of rock got caught in there and it just exploded uh, i'll put a little information bar right here so you guys can see the video if you missed it uh, so uh, what i'm doing now is because i'm waiting on the front axle housing to be replaced uh, I ordered one up a short time ago, even though they're not in stock, so I'm on the waiting list. This body won't be in use for a little while. That's too bad, because I really like this one. Uh, <laughs> this back bar, this roll bar, I installed, and you'll see why in the video. is for protection that goes across the back, right? You don't want to land on the top and, and, and break uh, one of the sides because you know, that's what happened to my uh, to kill a Toyota truck a long time ago is I didn't have a roll bar and I actually broke the beams on either side, which, which really ultimately just killed the cab. So I'd like to use these roll bars on the back. Since I can't use this body, I'm going to swap this out. Uh, sometimes I do this actually with my different trucks. If one truck is broken uh, and I need it on another truck, of course, if it's not an important part, I'll part it out and, you know, <laughs> pay Peter uh, with Paul's money, <laughs> so to speak, figuratively speaking. What I'm going to do today, you can see I've already removed uh, this back roll bar. Uh, and the, what, the reason why I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to use this in my Ford FX4 that I have. You guys saw me install a rear uh, bumper on it last video. Uh, I'm going to install the roll bars on this one because it's getting a little bit closer to my one-to-one -to -one scale look. All right. <laughs> Here is a look at my full size. Uh, I did have a red one years ago, but I switched it out to a blue uh, for my new truck. And here is the chase rack on the back. Now it does have a spare tire uh, mount right in the middle, as well as the light bars. Now I don't have these uh, pieces for the, um, for the bar I have inside, but I could always make them easy enough. And notice that my bar comes just above the uh, top of the cab. Uh, that way if there ever was a roll over would have some support in here. Now because this uh, bar actually wasn't made for this truck, I believe this is a new bright truck, uh, also got it years ago on an extended chassis and I did cover that in the last video that I was doing. I'll add another link up here so you guys can see the video if you did miss it. Uh, I also had to mod the back a little bit to get proper shocks in here. I had to cut it right here to expose the top of the shock tower as well as right here. Now these wheel wells are a different shape than the one that's on the bar, but regardless, kind of floats in and I want it to be sitting right about there. The spacers I'm going to use are actually just repurposed side body mount posts. Now normally these would stick out on either side of a Trail Finder 2 or a different vehicle like that where you needed to have a body post extending out to the side of a truck so the body could have fit and attached to the frame. Uh, and what I'm going to do is because they are pre-drilled which is perfect. I'm going to cut them down to size after I measure what I need over here. Plus, I may be able to use the extra pieces for the, the spacers I need on the back right there. So it looks like I need about a half an inch. Just going to use some painter's tape to wrap the piece I need to cut. That way I can clearly mark on this black piece and see exactly the line that I need. Safety glass is on. Always, uh, I always use safety glasses when I'm using anything to cut. Uh, of course, any kind of hot plastic or metal. I'm gonna use a Dremel, a rotary tool. 
Just dry fit the pieces, see if I have approximately the right height. All right, so because I'm using these spacers, I actually have to use longer screws than the ones that are provided. This is the one that came with it, and of course, here's the one that I'm gonna be using, so it can actually make it through the spacer and still grab onto the front of this bar. So I'm gonna to have to bore out the center of these spacers, just myself at least. Doing it slow. Now that it's gotten snug, I'm gonna switch over to using my channel locks just so I don't have to risk hurting my fingers. Removing the back body screws I put in to help adjust the height of the bumper we put in. And the front two screws. Normally when I'm taking uh, screws and nuts out just to make sure I don't lose them, I will put them together before I put them off to the side. All right, so one thing I didn't show you is that I actually ground down one side so it was flat, so it can sit nicely against the cab area. Okay, so now that's in there, and of course the box is going to keep it a certain distance away. So what I want to do is push it up against the box and measure the gap that's in between this wheel well and that back bar. One and two. Now I did have to shave these spacers on a bit of an angle to account for the roundness of the wheel well. So there we go. As we look at the bar, we can see it straight, comes just above the cab. On the inside, everything is nice and strong, lifted. Four screws have everything attached properly, and I can put the body back on. But before I do, let's do something a little on the crazy side. Here is a spoon, just something I have laying around. I don't have a piece of angle bracket or anything like that, just easily accessible, so why not use something like this? If I wanted to attach that tire, all I would need is something that looked somewhat like this. And if I took that spoon after bending it, put it in the truck such as this, I should be able to drill a hole right down here and through the center of the spoon to be able to mount up a tire right in the middle. See, RC doesn't need to be expensive, you just have to be creative with what you have. Now, of course, to hide the fact that I've used a spoon, just to make it look more scale looking. <laughs> Good old electrical tape will black this out for me. Then I'll cut the end of the spoon off because it's a little bit long. Use what you have on hand some days and you can get the job done and do it well. Okay, so with a hole drilled right through the spoon, I put in a, a small washer, a longer screw to the other side. Gonna mount that right through the middle so the screw sticks out here. Take another washer, stick it there, and of course, the mounting uh, nut. Gonna pre-fit and bend it so I know exactly where I wanna have that tire, sitting right about there. I'm going to use another little washer through the screw, place the screw through the bottom of the body, take the tire mount, mount it on top, and use a nut to tighten that up. Then once it's tightened up, 
now I've got the back mount for my tire. Not too bad for just a little spoon, hey? Now I might want to put in a second screw just to make sure it's super tight uh, and doesn't, you know, turn around. I don't have too much movement here now, but I will add a second screw right in the front to ensure that this is mounted properly. Look at that. There we go, my friends. <laughs> Pretty simple. Well, overall, this takes a bit of ingenuity, but, but it was fun to do. So, <laughs> I'm happy with that result. Uh, everything is strong, sturdy. Now when this flips upside down, it will help protect the top of this. Yeah, it'll get scratched, but it really won't uh, crush the pillars here. Uh, so yeah, it, you know what? Everybody was saying that it looks like this part rubs uh, and that it is just slightly off. And it is, but it doesn't rub at, you know, anything to be noticeable at. Maybe, maybe one millimeter, but nothing that's concerning you know so uh, built to look like my full-size truck just for fun like as a, as a side hobby thing to do uh, I'll add some more as I go of course uh, but I figure I might as well just kind of putter around the shop here and, and uh, see how scale it does look <laughs> 